Thank you very much. Good morning, Finnovate. Oh, wow. Quiet crowd. They haven't had coffee yet. <laughs> I heard some back there. So I, I'm Robert Capps. I am the, uh, the Vice President of Business Development for New Data Security. Uh, on the stage here with me is Ryan Wilk, our VP of Customer Success. Um, we're, we're here today to talk to you about uh, New Data. So New Data was formed in 2008 uh, with the intent of, 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 of answering a what seems to be a simple question about web users. Um, is that user connecting to your website a, a human? or is it a bot, right? And that sounds like an easy question, um, but, but our focus really is to design a better way to, to identify those uh, human and non-human interact, interactions um, in a way that, uh, frankly, didn't interact and, or interrupt the good customer experience. And, and uh, what we ended up building was, frankly, way cooler. Uh, we ended up building a product that could identify um, individual humans as well uh, in, in a... In, in a um, uh, between individual humans, sorry, things just crashed here in front of me. Uh, individual humans. Um, so what we're going to show you today, what we're going to demo for you today, is our flagship product, NewDetect. Uh, NewDetect is um, our product that uh, provides a multi-layered solution that evaluates the consumer's unique digital identity uh, in order to identify the individual human behind, uh, behind the, the, the device. So, uh, Ryan, could you talk to us about how we build a unique digital identity? Sure, Robert. So new data security positively verifies online users through real-time behavioral analytics, identifying good users from bad. We give our clients the ability to identify the human in a digital world. New data takes a multi-layered approach to create this digital identity, looking across multiple aspects of how that user's interacting, starting with the device and connection, building out a base level understanding of where that user's coming from and what they're connecting with. The second layer we look at is behavioral analytics. We look to answer three primary questions. Is this user interacting in a way we've expected them to interact from a historical standpoint? Is this behavior interacting with the environment in a way that behaviors are expected to interact? Or has this user or has this behavior deviated from historical norms? We look at behavioral biometrics. We look to really understand how that user is inputting into the device, building out a profile of not just the machine, not just the behavior, but of the actual human sitting behind, looking at things like type speed, um, pressure settings, uh, accelerometer readings. Finally, looking at real-time entity linking, being able to take all of these aspects of the digital identity, bringing them together in real time, and understanding when various behaviors are coalescing, either, either in a valid way or in a potential risky way. So, uh, Ryan, let's, uh, let's demonstrate uh, the power of uh, new detect. So, Absolutely. So what I have here is I have a machine that I've never interacted with before. This is a new computer that was lent to me by my marketing department. So I'm on a brand new device, and I'm on a brand new connection. In the traditional world, it becomes very difficult to be able to understand, is it really the correct human entering those credentials, or is it the correct person? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my account now. And we're going to take a look at the actual biometric input that I'm using. So. So I've logged in, and as we can all see here, I received a strong biometric match on my profile. I'm now going to dig into our dashboard to take a, a behind-the-scenes look at what data we've actually pulled together here. So as we're seeing, my login was approved. I received a strong biometric match, but as I mentioned, I've never interacted with this IP before, and I've never interacted with this device before. And this now gives you the ability to identify that human, the actual human entering those credentials, as opposed to simply just looking at the device. We can see here again, new IP, new device, but I did receive a strong biometric match. We also visualize that biometric match in a histogram, as you can see, seeing that my input profile as that white line um, falling within the statistical norm of what would be expected for Ryan actually entering his username and password. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask Robert to come in. I'm going to ask him to uh, log in using my credentials to see what happens uh, when he tries to do this. So, Robert, I'm going to lend you my password there. Really? <laughs> All right. Uh, Ryan, let's see, Ryan at Wilk. .net, P A S S W. I feel dirty typing. This. <laughs> o R D at one. Okay, so I'm gonna hit login. Ah! So look at that. You <laughs> did enter the credentials correctly. So he did use my correct username and password. He's clearly taken over my account. But as we can see, he received a weak biometric match. It was not really Ryan. So let's dig into this a little bit more. 
So as we can see here, when Robert entered his profile, it fell significantly outside the norm within the statistical average of what Ryan would be interacting with. Whether this was a known device, an unknown device, we're now able to take this a step further and understand the human behind the machine. So we just looked at an authentication attempt. Now let's look at what happens when we attempt to uh, verify a human that we've never seen before, so a new account application. I'm going to be signing up for a credit card here at New Bank Financial. As you can see, uh, I pre-populated everything here, so you don't need to watch me type. I'm going to click Register. My account's been created. I'm now going to click into here to better to, to see what's going on with this interaction. So we can see we've never seen me before. There's no interaction history within, within this particular customer environment for Ryan. But what we can see here is that there's a device and connection link. This device and connection has been seen within our cloud consortium over time and in a, in a positive way. So we're able to build out a base level understanding that this device and connection have a historical interaction. We're able to take this even a step further and now say that the device and the passive biometric profile have a historical interaction within our environment. So not only has this device and connection interacted, but this device and this human have interacted over time as well. And we've also been able to verify that this was in fact a human interacting with the device, giving you the ability to be able to have a strong digital identity and being able to verify that digital identity and give that customer a great experience. Fantastic, thank you, Ryan. So um, unfortunately, we're a little short on time technical issues also, uh, but uh, you know, these are just a couple of the really focused use cases that play out across our customer base every day. Uh, with over 38 billion profiling events that we saw just last year, um, we have a lot more information to share with you. So if you come by our booth over in the, uh, the networking hall later, uh, we're happy to share with you some of the more of those use cases and show you a little more in-depth uh, information about the product. So thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you over at the hall. Thank you, everyone.